people that are part of the core leadership, out of hundreds of people that I've gone through, who are part of the leadership there for protecting those who protect us. And the majority of the people are from that area, but there are many, many who are not. And it's the role of us as supporters from outside that we always uphold and train and support the people that are on the ground. So just to give you an example of efficiency versus safety, the next slide, I, um, if anybody takes pictures, please don't take pictures in the next slide because it shows some, uh, some sensitive information that I don't want to get out, but I wanted to show you an example of how it's not your clinic. So these are the camps at Standing Rock. So we have here, that, this is a tree camp. Um, this is where they had, the, um, when they destroyed um, all, of the, 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 all the teepees in that, on October 27th. Then you have the Chetty Shop Point Camp in here, which is the majority of people are there. That's about 7,000 people right now uh, that are staying there. This right here, across the river, this is the Cannonball River. This is the actual, uh, this is the reservation. Uh, we have also Rosebud Chichangu is over here. Uh, that's one of the other camps, and right here is the Sacred Stone Camp. So this is the camp we get uh, map detail. This is actually an old slide that I wanted to share with you. I don't give you the new one. The reason why I wanted to point out you can't show this map is because you have the exact location of some of the places and some of the camps that have several hundreds of people that are there that are particularly going to be targeted more than other camps because they represent those who are doing more work on the front lines. So this is a low detail map that I developed for the public. Uh, so this is a lot, as you can see, they're all hand drawn because as uh, like any front line of occupation, it's a place under flux. And so one of the things that we needed to identify is that people weren't calling the camps uniform names. So we needed to identify where are the places that you pick up, all the different gates, and then where the medics were located. But we didn't want to have too much detail because we didn't want to, because in this particular situation, you have the government who is currently being extremely violent and oppressive to the people that are there. So you don't want to give them information. So my perspective, what does this have to do with racism? So racism and a climate change crisis. And I realized more and more over the past few years that they needed to destroy our cultures in order to disempower our communities because profit-oriented efficiency is fundamentally incompatible with cultures of sustainability and stewardship. And unless we accept that and move urgently in a united way to protect what we have rightly, rightfully identified as sacred, the future for all peoples are in dire jeopardy. And part of that is looking at traditional models of our own governance so that we don't replicate the models of the oppressor. So as we look, when I'm talking about Ahalo, I'm looking at traditional models this is one of the oldest descriptions of our traditional model. And this work looks at the entire nation as one body that works together. You have the people, the specialists, you have the government people, you have the warriors, you have those who communicate with others and those who feed, feed the people. And part of what you'll see over and over again in communities of advocacy and activism is that we have, our nations have, many of them have been broken and fractured. That was deliberate, because if we work together as one, it was immovable. So they had to fracture us. They did it, they wanted to kill us, but in reality, we still were around, but they couldn't completely break us down. So, but what we need to do now is in order to learn to work together, we have to remember, do not disdain what you do not do. The Kalaimoku builds a structure and gathers the people. The protectors are the vanguard. The communicators weave our stories. The hunters, farmers, and fishermen are the foundation for food security. And we, the healers and educators, need to be a part of healing the trauma, both past and present, so that we can move together united as one body. So part of our sciences that we have to do, this is the other thing that I do, is the traditional sciences. We need to really reinvigorate them. This is the local EI, yeah, traditional aquaculture. I help support this is Kevin Louis Fishpond over in Molokai. Uh, we have Uncle Emmett over here. He's one of the ones who are, who's on Molokai. Is, uh, and also, um, we have many people, I'll let you guys talk about that later on, but um, Bill Thomas over there talking about how Molokai is really a model for sustainability for our people. Uh, this picture right here is um, where I come from, Waiahole. And you can see right here, this is a, the, this image is called Kalapa'ao Waiahole. And after the first occupation where my, my parents met that was destroyed, it was completely destroyed as a village during the early 1970s, 
a wire holly then rolls up as a color basket of Oahu. And you can see at the roots of it, you see the people and the struggles growing up into the, into the, the leaf that it then became the water struggle in Hawaii. And we are the ones all together are feeding the people in the water. So the other thing that I think we need to realize is that we need passion and respect of difference for our unity. In Hawaii, we are at a crossroads where we are talking about federal recognition versus complete independence. And I think one of the things that very passionately some of us on, our, on the board, we disagree about that. But that's okay. We need to have passionate and civil discussions because we have to move forward together because we really have no choice. There's really no choice. We need to be able to save all of our people and, and, and build together. So for myself, my perspective, this is where I differ from a lot of physicians. I believe that Western governments have demonstrated that they are unable to change their course. We as indigenous peoples will see an escalation of force and brutality as the fundamental philosophies of our cultures become increasingly stark. This is an example of the most recent attacks that are happening at Sandy Rock. 300 patients on November 20th were treated on the bridge in the confrontation that occurred there with Morgan County Police Department. The majority were for hypothermia and reaction to chemical weapons in the form of pepper spray and tear gas. <coughs> Projectiles in the form of tear gas canisters, rubber bullets and concussion grenades led to numerous blood for trauma, blood force trauma, mostly contusions, fractures, and concussions, but there are also instances where many of you saw, Sophia Lewinsky is probably going to lose her arm from a concussion grenade, and then we also had another, young, um, another woman who um, she had a retinal detachment and was probably going to lose her vision. So, what can we do? This is a call out that's been called out from my warrior camp. We asked everybody tomorrow, which is actually with North Dakota's November 28th, when Red Fawn will be on trial. She was arrested on October 27th at the Treaty Camp Raid, and she was faced with murder charges, attempted murder charges, for allegedly um, firing a, a gun. Uh, she's never owned a gun, she's never been seen, there's no witnesses. All these are from the Morgan County Police Department reports. Um, of note, Sophia Lewinsky is also potentially going to be charged, a woman who's about to lose her arm, because uh, she's being accused of uh, building a propane bomb. Again, repeatedly over and over again, we have said, we are unknown. In 2004, the Ahuyona Kauka, the Association of Native Hawaiian Physicians, made a hokai to Mama Kia to educate ourselves on what is important to our culture, to us as Hawaiians. As Kanaka Maoli and medical scientists, we support scientists, we support the protection of Mama Kia. We support the protection of all sacred places. And we understand that Wahipana are essential to the health of our people. So what I would like to put out is a challenge out here to the pre -dog. I would like to propose a resolution in support of all of our protectors. And this resolution says that we, the participants of the Pacific Region Indigenous Doctors Congress 2016, support the Standing Rock Sioux in their struggle to protect their lands and water from the development of the Dakota Access Oil Crude Oil Pipeline. We recognize the impending global environmental crisis and that it is the first peoples of the land who stand at the forefront of defense and as a result are suffering from the greatest damage. As indigenous doctors, healers, and scientists, we understand the importance of protecting our lands, resources, and sacred sites for the health of our people and future generations. We condemn the human rights violations occurring right now at the Sheikh Ocheti Shakorn, in particular, the targeting of medics in violation of the Geneva Convention. We call upon our respective governments and communities to do the same. In this era of climate change crisis, we commit to organizing and mobilizing our profession to ensure the protection of those who would protect all of us, both currently at Standing Rock and for future struggles to come. Why do you heal them? Water is life. Um,